Hello everyone, I'm Paulito Palmes of IBM Research Europe of Dublin Research Lab. Today I'm going to talk about wrapping up offline Arial as part of AutoML pipeline workflow. First, the preliminaries. Let's differentiate between online Arial versus offline Arial. In online Arial, there are two important elements, agent and the environment. The agent interacts with the environment by sending action and the environment uh, gives feedback by giving the next state and the reward. The idea is for the agent to maximize return, which is the accumulation of some of discounted current and future rewards. Each observation is part of a sequence of SAR trajectory, and it, each action influences future observations and accumulated rewards. Unlike in typical ML problem, where the objective is to make one-time prediction of the action to take, RL makes a series of predictions dynamically as it receives observations and optimizes accumulation of corresponding rewards. More information can be found in this reference. There are three figures here. The first one is the online RL. The second one is the off-policy reinforcement learning. And the third one is the offline reinforcement learning. In the online RL, you have uh, the agent interacting with the environments and collecting the rollout data. And this, this new collection of the rollout data will be used to update the policy. And then the new policy will be used to explore the environment further. In the off policy, you have a combination of the new rollout data with the old data set as part of the training data to update the policy. And then once the policy is updated, it will be used to explore the environment further. In the offline reinforcement case, there is really no interaction with the environment. So what you have here is the collection of data statically and then once you have the bunch of this data set, it becomes, um, it serves as like a batch learning where the batches of this data or this trajectory will become part of the buffer that is used to learn, uh, to train the reinforcement learning agents. Since there's no interaction, all of this will be done in, a, in an offline manner. And then once the agent is, uh, is optimized, then it will be ready for deployment. So why offline RL? First is the cost. It can be too expensive to interact repeatedly and explore certain environment such as workload or resource management in the cloud, but cheaper to collect lags in statistics for offline RL learning. There is a risk involved to train an agent in autonomous driving in robotic operations. And of course, the lastly, there is a big technological advancement in deep learning research now, so batch learning can scale up very well for large data sets. So what is the major objective of this talk? So given a data set containing state action reward trajectories, we will create an AutoML pipeline wrapper function for offline RL to make it trivial to search for the best data processing pipeline for offline RL application. So the succeeding slides now will show you the demonstration of how to do this. So let's start with loading the packages necessary for this demonstration. And then let's load the pre-processing elements, which are composed of the scaler, RoboScaling, Power Transform, Normal, MinMax, Standard Scaling, and then Column Selector to select the categorical features or the numerical features of your observations. And then the feature extractors such as PCA, FA, and ICA. And uh, ML and RL agents such as Random Forest, uh, decision trees, DQN agents, and then the SAC agents. Let's now load an artificial data set. So this artificial artificial data is composed of around a uh, thousand observations where you have a time series of the day of the month, the hour, the minute, the day of the week, sensor one, sensor two, sensor three, action and reward. You can think of the sensor to be, for example, um, GPU resources, uh, if this is a workload management, or this can be memory, this is CPU, and the action will be how many uh, memory resources to allocate. This can be also an inventory where you have item one, item two, and item three, and based on the observation of the different values of these items, the action is to allocate um, or when to order uh, the next item, how many, what is the size of the items to order and so on. And based on the action, you have corresponding rewards. Let's now convert our data frame into the data 
set representation for our RL agent. So let's extract the observation. And then let's extract the action and then the reward. And the terminal here represents uh, episodes. So for every thousand in a series of observation, we terminate it with one to indicate that every thousand observation is an episode to optimize. Every episode is a, is a trajectory that the agent has to maximize its return. Let's now recall how the auto ML pipeline workflow function. So this is the symbolic uh, expression to indicate that we want the numerical features of our data set to be in a standard scale. And this is the result. Another example is that after standard scaling, we transform it using PCA and this is the result. And now we can add uh, the random forest, uh, for example, learner, uh, as, uh, at the end of the pipeline to predict the action, for example. So here's the uh, final performance uh, percentage of prediction. And the value is very low because this is artificially generated data. So let's look at the how we can use the same workflow for our RL agent using an FQ agent. So again, we are given the symbolic pipeline of extracting the numerical feature of the observation space and then scale it with minmax and then PCA transform and then feed it to the NFQ. And what we get is the temporal difference learning error, which is 4.7 exponential to the 20th power, which is a quite large number. So the TD error is the difference between the agent's current estimate and the target value. And take note that NFQ and many of these agents are using deep learning architecture and they are quite sensitive to the kind of transformation you use for your data set. Uh, let's try the DQN agent using uh, NumF standard scaling and ICA workflow and see the TD error. And you will see here that the TD, the TD error is much better than the previous one. So now we can uh, use this uh, idea in order to search for the optimal pipeline uh, offline RL. So the, the idea is that we're going to loop over the different uh, types of uh, R, R, offline RL agents. And then we also use the different types of scalers and extractors. And we're going to loop in parallel the different agents, the different scalers, and the different extractor, finding the best RL pipeline with this uh, particular uh, expression. So numerical features are uh, scaled and uh, extracted using the different uh, uh, extractors. And then we're gonna record their performance and um, sort them based on their performance. So let's do that. And here are the results. So these are the top results the a new op means that there's no scaling involved uh, followed by fast ICA and double DQN and it has the best uh, TD error followed by this so it seems that the DQN uh, uh, and the double DQN are the ones dominating the best result and let's get the summary of the first five results in the last five results. So these are the top five dominated by DQN and the last five. You will see that DQN uh, and double DQN are still there, but it seems that the different combination of the preprocessing elements can uh, really big, make a big difference. You will see here that the worst results are in uh, exponential, while the best results are very close to zero. And that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much.